One of the first things you have to do if you're building an HTC RAS model, whether it's a clear water model or a fixed bed debris flow model or a mobile bed sediment transport model, is you have to import terrain. Now, in the United States, the U.S. Geological Survey has developed a database that's getting pretty extensive of digital elevation models that are available across the United States. And so the RAS team has added automated tools to go query and import from that database that just saves a lot of time. And so I'm going to show you how to use those tools. So we're looking at a post wildfire hazard assessment also from the USGS here. Um, and you can see that in this sub watershed here, we actually have you know, very high burn extent and very high you know, probability of high volume debris flow. So in a future video, I'm actually going to walk through the whole process of setting up and running an expedited debris flow model. But here we're just going to download the terrain data. Um, and so in order to do that, they've got a shape file here. And so I got that shape file. Why do I need the shape file? Well, there's a couple things you can do with the shape file. But the most important thing you could do is you can set your projection. So we're going to go to project, set projection. And I went in and I selected the shape file I downloaded. And that's a really easy way to set your projection. So now that I have my projection, I can go in and I can add the web imagery. And I'm going to look at the satellite map. And I'm going to zoom into this area. And you can see that here is the sub watershed that I'm interested in. And then I'm going to make some assessment of what's the downstream risk extent that I want to get terrain for. And so I'm going to just right click here on terrains. And it says download train data. And there are a couple of options here. Some of the, these are only available to the Corps of Engineers, but the USGS is publicly available. So you can select USGS and you get this download train data from the USGS tool. The first thing you want to do is query the products. You want to know what kind of coverage is there in the area that you're dealing with. You can look at topo maps, but we're interested in elevation models. Um, and the question is, where do you want these from? And so you, you can see, I kind of zoomed into the area I'm interested in because I want the current view. But if you have a geometry already, if you've developed your centerline station and your cross sections, or if you have your, you know, polygon for your grid. Um, you can do that. Or you can bring in a shapefile. I could bring in those burn shapefiles if I wanted to. I actually want to get some area downstream of them, so I didn't do that. But Or you can do a lat lat long query. But I'm just going to go with the current view. Then I'm going to ask the tool to query the products. So I'll press query products. It'll grind a little bit, but then it shows me everything that's available there, and it shows me the resolution. And one of the nice things is that it also adds these temporary layers so that you can actually look at what's available in the region, and it'll plot them. And so if I go back and forth between my tools, I can say, hey, I only want to look at the one meter data. Then I can go back in here and look at, hey, what's the one meter coverage? And the one meter coverage is just about perfect for what I want to do with a small sub watershed. And so we could do that, but we can also go and say, OK, that's fine, but show me the 30 meter data. Where's that? And so then we can come back here, and it'll show us you know, what's the, what's the coverage of 30 meter data? But I'm going to go back and just take that one meter data because that looked great. And so we'll click on the one meter data and it shows us that, you know, we actually have within this little postage stamp of what we're interested in, we have two different products. And if we go look at them, you'll see it shows you, this is a link to the GS website. It shows you the, the, extent of that coverage and then what's actually included in the train model. And so we look at the other one, you'll see that the other one actually includes the balance um, of what was included in the previous one. And so I'm going to just choose both of these. And then I'm just going to press start download. And it's going to go and it'll it'll grind for a little bit. But it's going to go and get those. So that took a little over a minute. And if I say OK, it'll close me out. I can close this. And now if I go to trains, I can go create new RAS terrain. And I'm going to add files because I just made them. And you'll see it brings up the Projects Explorer with the two trains that just got in a subfolder called train. And so I'll select them both, and I'll say open. And now I'm going to create a train. I like to go in here and change the name of my train. You see that changes it right here. And then I'll press Create. And this will take a little while to stitch them together. So that took 1 minute and 26 seconds. But now, if you go in and you turn off the coverage, you can see that it's brought in a train that has full coverage of the area I'm interested in both contributing and where I want to build my debris flow RAS model. 
And so that whole process took less than five minutes and we're ready to go. So these tools were developed by Cameron Ackerman and Anton Rotorsiren, um, members of the RAS team. I'm Stanford Gibson, the sediment transport specialist on the HC RAS team, and this video was funded by the HHC SET program.